We're in Santa Cruz County, Arizona, and that over there is the wall. The wall that Donald Trump built his 2016 campaign on. We're going to build the wall. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. Build that wall. Build that wall. Which he's building his third election campaign on now. Build that wall. It's also the one that Americans across this country see when they turn on the TV, when they hear politicians talking about illegal migration. How about that caravan? Do you want to let that caravan just pour in? I don't think so. My parents came and they had to, pardon the language, they had to work their butt off to get to where they are. I have to protect the soil where I'm living. I cannot just destroy the house. This is not an Airbnb. She can yap, yap, yap all she wants, but she didn't actually do it. These people that come across aren't coming across to commit crimes. They're coming across to work. She's done nothing. She's been the border czar. She's not. She, does, she hasn't been here. This community that we're in in the U.S. would die without the relationship with Mexico. Just spit that out your mouth and you don't do a thing. Here, it's not considered any kind of a crisis. To better understand how voters view immigration and how it might affect their choice at this election, we travel to Florida, where a quarter of the population is Latino. We were given access to a Hispanic megachurch, which attracts 8,000 people in person every week and tens of thousands more online from over 50 countries. Services are led by Alberto Delgado, a Hispanic advisor to Donald Trump, Pastor, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. I want to ask you about your, as we walked down this corridor here, we saw the photo of you and President Trump together. I want to ask you about your relationship with him. Well, Trump, yeah. How you know him and, and what your relationship is with him now. Well, in this last uh, time term that he was here in his uh, campaign, I have a big church. So, you know, they, all these people look for votes. And uh, we are in a time in this country that is really leaning to the left extremely. Trump shows that he wants to maintain America great again. The country cannot absorb this amount of people at once. There are legal manners of arriving. And even though we as Christians must help those that are already here, Something has to be done because of the high level of criminality there. Do you see Trump as a man of faith? Because I think some people would say he's the only former president to ever be federally indicted by a court. He's been accused of cheating on his wife. I definitely believe Trump, he is defending the Christian values. And because he cheated on his wife, he cheated. When? A long time ago. There's no, no signs lately that he's done it. We wanted to find out if the pastor's political views permeated throughout his Hispanic congregation. If anyone wants to come to any country, yes, you should go through the legal process of it. Um, like I said, my parents come from, from they, 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 they did come illegally, um, but they went through actually the process once they were here and they got caught. They went through the proper you know, steps in order to become legalized. Can I just ask you about that? Because a lot of the people who are coming into this country illegally are doing exactly that. They, they cross the border, they go and find a border patrol, border guard. They say, hello, I'm here, I want to claim asylum. And then, you know, they go into the system to be processed, which is what you're saying happened to your parents. Yeah. But your, your, your view is that other people like your parents shouldn't be able to do that. No, my view is if you're going to come because a lot of them, they actually do it in a way where they're coming to the to our country now, and the way the current you know government is, they're offering them free incentives. My parents came and they have to, pardon the language, they have to work their butt off to get to where they are. Of course, it's a country that allows immigrants in this country. My father was one of them, but it's all about you know bringing immigrants to this country to do it legally, uh, so that there's safety within our community and our country. Everyone is welcome but you gotta knock at the door. It is true, a lot of Hispanic communities typically for a long time voted democratic, right? But unfortunately, many of our Hispanic countries in Latin America are over 
come by socialism and communism. My parents are from Cuba and Cuba suffered socialism is still currently in socialism. Abby's from Nicaragua that also suffers from communism and socialism. And so um, because of those fears, when they see something that's getting close to socialist rhetoric, they turn away from that. My parents came to this country in 1973 from Nicaragua, Central America. So back then, the American dream existed for, for immigrants, for natives, for everybody. But inflation is out of control. That American dream has evaporated. And the Democrats come in and spend money like a teenager with a new credit card. I, yeah, I know if I'm gonna vote, I'm gonna vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> okay, and tell me, tell me why. Because I believe in his values and um, I just think his values align. I think he does a very good representation of the Christian community. There's a lot of people who would say, well, you know, he's been, he's been found guilty of breaking the law, he's been to court a bunch of times. It's, it's an interesting combination there of kind of Christian values and legal issues. What, yeah. what do you think of it? Do you have any thoughts on that? So um, I think the whole uh, idea behind Christianity is that no one's perfect. I think that his values align to what God says. In the time we've been talking to people about migration, one of the most interesting things is people whose families came to the US legally or illegally, but still support closing down the southern US border and stopping more people from coming here. One of the most interesting people of that position is Myra Jolie, who is an immigration attorney. She helps people who come to the US illegally to petition the government to stay, but she also supports Donald Trump's policies of shutting the border and deporting a million illegal migrants if he wins office again in November. What I want to ask her is how she can bring those two things together. I am originally from the Dominican Republic, and uh, we, all of us, we emigrated to the, to the United States after my father uh, filed all the petitions for all of us. We waited and we, we, we kind of went through the process that's supposed to be uh, followed to come to another country. Trump has always taken a very strong stance on migration, and Harris is now doing the same. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the solution to this issue? The solution to this issue is to uh, put a moratorium in the asylum claim. That will really stagnate this uncontrollable list of people just coming to the borders and then just claiming asylum, which is the, you know, it's the passport, like, don't touch me, I'm claiming asylum, everybody come through. So your position and the position of your practice is you, you don't help people who are intending to come to the US illegally. Exactly. But once someone has come here illegally, you would then help them Absolutely, absolutely. It's like the doctor. The doctor don't help people get an overdose. But after they get the overdose, even if that doctor is not, uh, you know, is not a support of people doing drugs, if that doctor is encountered with this person who, who overdosed, they don't want to let them die. That's the same. I am like, you know, I'm practically a magician, but I'm the doctor of immigration. I have to protect the soil where I'm living. I cannot... I cannot just destroy as if it was just a frat party and nobody cares about the house. This is not an Airbnb. This is a home. I think it's interesting that some people whose families came to the US illegally, who you know, were undocumented migrants and have had children, some of those people are very critical of illegal migration and other people doing exactly what their families did. It does seem that there's a shift in the Latino population towards Trump, and that is perhaps counterintuitive. When Donald Trump speak, Donald Trump speak to the average person, he has the pulse of the people. He has it. When he was speaking, saying oh, all the things that he said about the immigration, about the people coming in, about the rapists, about the drug addicts, and then uh, the drug dealers and all of that, I, I have to agree with him because uh, those are my clients. What was clear from that interview is that Myra doesn't see any tension between being an immigration lawyer that helps people who come to the US illegally and supporting shutting down the border and stopping them from doing that. She says that a doctor wouldn't be supportive of people hurting themselves even though they're someone who helps them afterwards. What she also talks about is the way that migrants, once they get to the US, aren't migrants anymore. They're Americans. They're people who should try and protect their country and its prosperity and its borders and stop other people from doing the same thing that they've done. In the swing state of Arizona, which borders Mexico, Trump knows that his anti-immigration message strikes a chord. When I win on November 5th, the migrant invasion ends and the restoration of our country begins. 
His supporters gathered at a J.D. Vance rally in the state's biggest city, Phoenix. Kamala Harris. became the Vice President of the United States on a promise of open borders, and she actually delivered. I want to see each and every one of you at the polls on November 5th. Amen? Amen! Amen. Can I ask you about Kamala Harris's border plan? She says that she'll stick by the Biden plan that he tried to put through Congress. She's, she's done nothing. She's been the border czar. She's not. She, does, she hasn't been here. I mean, Really, just spit that out your mouth and you don't do a thing. We're already hearing a lot of states where they want illegal, they want non-citizens to be able to vote. I mean, it does take genes to figure out where they're going. She can yap, yap, yap all she wants, but she didn't actually do it. She's always been for open borders, and now just in the last six weeks or so, she's for open, she's for closed borders. So you can't really believe what she says. You're wearing a veteran Trump hat. Yes. You're referring there to your service abroad, are you? Can you yes. tell us a bit about that? Mm, I would not like to, but I was there and I made sure that those bad guys stayed over there and they didn't come over here. And now since the borders were open, whether it's uh, gangs from Venezuela or uh, bad guys from around the world, they're just letting them in. I'm friends with one of the sheriffs, a border sheriff, and the things that he has told me that he has witnessed, she has no idea. He ran into a lady that she had a bunch of pills on her, you know, she, he found her in the bushes, right? And he asked her what the pills were, and she says every time, every day that she's come from Mexico to here, she's been raped every single day, and those are her after morning pills, abortion pills, because she gets raped every day coming to here. That's not right to bring those people under that precinct. That was a shocking accusation, but such stories are not uncommon in the Trump discourse. We were keen to find out whether that depiction matched reality. Yesterday we went to this J.D. Vance speech, but that was in Phoenix, is one of the biggest cities in America, and it's two and a half hours from the border. So this morning we're heading down to actually see it. Um, we're going to a town which is split in half by the border. Half of it is in Mexico, the other half is in the southern U.S. And we're going to meet with David Hathaway, who is a local sheriff. Okay, que Dios la bendiga. When we see the figures and the stories about illegal migration, we see there are thousands of people coming over to the US, often they're caught and then released by border force. How do you think communities here feel about those people being here? Well, in this community, it's not an issue. Uh, my county, where I'm the sheriff, is 80% uh, Hispanic. It's not a new demographic. This isn't a quote unquote invasion. It's an important symbiotic relationship. This community that we're in in the US would die without the relationship with Mexico. How does it make you feel then when you see Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, Republicans making that argument? Regrettably, it's easy to scare people who aren't along the border, who don't witness it for themselves. The rape trees and all this kind of stuff, where they have, oh, they'll put the trophies of the underwear of all the women they've raped and all this. Like, this is just, nonsense and we would see those crimes here you know there of course there's occasionally crimes of all kinds in both the you know domestic residents and people who are coming in from another country but that is just pure fantasy that's trying to sensationalize sensationalize the issue for people who don't know any better i can take you to a rural area where there is no borders fence and we can sit there all day and all you're going to hear is the birds chirping and the wind blowing Thinking about Kamala Harris for a second, I mean, she's now taken over the Democratic ticket from Joe Biden. She's backed the plans that he put to Congress earlier this year. And she has changed her view, it seems, on migration since you know she ran for the primaries back in 2019 and when she was a, an attorney general in California. I mean, do you, th do you feel like the political climate in Washington has f forced her into a harder line, perhaps, on migration? I'm still trying to gauge that, but from hearing her recent interviews, I would think so. Everything stays the same until we get a chance to send some cabinet level people to the border to talk to the Chamber of Commerce, local politicians, ranchers, talk to everybody and see what we need to do different. That never happened. 
we're almost four years later. We never got a visit here from any member of the Biden administration to come actually study what needs to be done to actually talk to us. There are people that come for photo ops. There have been individual politicians from Washington that come and stand next to that fence, have their picture taken, and then they go back on social media and they say, been there, done that, kind of like, I was there. People who live right next to this wall, who may be crossed over from Mexico themselves, might not be concerned about the number of undocumented migrants travelling into the US. Two hours away in Phoenix, the biggest city in this state, people are concerned about migration. It is a hot topic, and in cities across the US where migrants often end up when they get bussed over after crossing. People say they're concerned about crime, they say they're concerned about drug smuggling and cartels who are operating on the other side of the border who it's claimed are the ones helping people to get across. The problem for Kamala Harris is not what's happening right here next to the fence. The problem is what's happening in the hearts and minds of Americans across this country who are not convinced that she really cares about this problem, that she wants to bring the numbers down, and that she's not gonna stop migration becoming an issue for the next four years.